Recently, Dr. John Peterson shared a very interesting cognition. I do not want to talk much about politics on this channel, but that thought was so great that I want to share it here. So it is a more uh, inconspicuous listing in the appendix of his so-called conservative manifesto that he published recently. It teaches us that the unequal is not just immanent in existence in general. In my opinion, it furthermore teaches us that we should even strive for inequality instead of equality. So the list that he published goes as follows. Inequality is immanent in reality in both natural and social structures. And the inequality is displayed, so it now starts that list, for example, in the distribution of matter within galaxies. So a small number of stars have the most mass. In the movement of water within ecosystems, so a small number of rivers carry the most world's water. And in the habitation of people within geographical regions, so that means a small number of cities host the majority of the people. And furthermore, in the distribution of natural resources, so a small number of oil fields store the most deposits. And we can also see this in social structures, for example, human achievements that a small number of classical composers, for example, wrote the majority of all the classical repertoire. And a small number of scientists published the majority of scientific papers, while a small number of scientific papers accrue the majority of citations. And even in the common book sales, so a small number of authors dominate the world's common bestseller charts. And also on the economical side, we can see that, that a small number of people in every enterprise undertake the vast bulk of the valuable work. So that is close to the common uh, Pareto principle, right? And a small number of people garner the most income and wealth. And also in art and architecture, which is more important on this channel, we can also see that nearly all remarkable achievements in human culture are usually done by or for an elite. So all important artwork or buildings are usually either designed by an elite or assigned by an elite, like wealthy people or even priests, the church and so on. And then from there it kind of seeped down, let's say, into the common mass. So that, I mean the good news is that in the end everyone profit from that, so even the, let's say, common people, but it takes a while. So it was, it's always like created by an elite and then in the end it spreads in a more reduced form into the, into the broad mass. And even on the economical side, we see a parallel development, uh, which was like just recently shown in the book of Dr. Rainer Zittelmann in Defense of Capitalism. There he actually shows that like we have kind of two options. So we have the choice of inequality and equality, but equality is kind of just possible when all are like equally poor. So we can all be equally poor, but not equally rich. But actually he shows that, which is best displayed in graphs like that I sketched here briefly that it's not like we would like commonly think that there's like a certain amount of money and it can be like distributed between the different people it's not like that the r the gap between the rich and poor become like bigger in in a way that the left graph here shows but actually it develops like we can see on the right graph so it was was shown main mainly in that book that we can if the rich become richer so let's say the gap between rich and poor is bigger then also the the lower class of the society, they also ha have more wealth than in the other example. So we have the choice between like we can all equally poor or we should actually strive for a, a bigger gap between rich and poor. So we should strive for inequality even in economical uh, relations. So when the rich are like richer, let's say, then the broad mass has also more money than in the equal distribution example. So I mean, in the end, it means we should not fight the elite. We should actually like strive for inequality instead of equality.